Hello there. I'm going to be giving you a presentation on uh, a slideshow which is normally reserved for our open day. Uh, typically speaking, uh, we have two open days per year um, and they're reserved for um, interested course attendees who will come along, uh, they will get to learn about Vanquish and the structure of the organisation um, and will get to learn about the, the training course itself and how they can potentially benefit from it. So, um, as a bit of an introduction, I'll give a brief background about myself. Um, my name is Michael Chandler. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Vanquish Group. Um, I have a number of roles within the company, one of which is uh, to instruct on these, uh, on these training courses between uh, three or four times per year. Um, I'm ex Royal Military Police from so Territorial Army. Uh, I spent about four years in that regiment. Um, I've worked in the security industry for uh, a while. I won't tell you how long. Um, Vanquish, um, we're going to go over in a little bit more detail in a moment, so I'll put that to one side for now. Uh, the brand, um, there's not really much to know about the brand itself, so the only thing I could mention about it is that it's a registered trademark. Um, we've done that for a number of reasons, um, but we own the intellectual property for the word Vanquish, um, and it cannot be used by anyone else without our permission for either security services, um, training courses or training academies, um, and investigative services as well. So uh, a quick rundown of the group structure. Uh, so obviously the, the, the main company or the umbrella company is the Vanquish Group, essentially a management company. But it does own and manage a number of smaller companies, one of which is Vanquish Security and Investigation Consultants. This was the first company we incorporated. It was incorporated in August 2011. Um, so we're a relatively young company. Um, the purpose of that company was to provide security services to high net worth individuals and celebrities. Um, our unique selling point, because we were moving into an industry that was very competitive, our unique selling point was going to be that we could investigate any threats that our clients or principals would receive. So rather than just uh, providing more security opportunities to someone who received the threat, we would investigate that for them and hopefully nip it in the bud that way. Um, what happened um, after well, about six months to a year, we opened our investigative services to the general public. Um, we started off with the private investigators.co.uk. Uh, we entered a bidding war for several companies in the US for the private investigators.com. Once we ascertained that domain name, we opened our service up to the public and um, things just went crazy. Um, we were forced to separate the two companies um, and now we own something called Vanquish Investigation Services. Vanquish Investigation Services um, provides private investigation services, members of the general public. We also work for a lot of law firms as well. So just going back to security and investigation consultants, um, we kept that name really out for additional purposes. It was our first company, it didn't bother changing the name. It should really be called Vanquish Security Services because that's all that company does. Uh, Vanquish Training Academy um, was a byproduct of those two organizations. So when we first started deploying operatives onto uh, surveillance tasks, we were relying on their knowledge and um, experience in, in, in the investigation sector of the, private, uh, of the security industry. And what we found is that a lot of people who claim to have been trained in surveillance had actually only received a half hour, in some cases, to you know half a day's training in surveillance, which really wasn't adequate. And, and so what we did was we created a two-day training course um, and invite all of our security operatives and say, look, come to our uh, office in London, we'll go through this training course with you. Uh, it's relatively brief, it's only two days long, um, and then we'll be able to deploy you on, on surveillance operations. And what it did for us was it gave us um, the knowledge that they would go out um, adhering to our standard operating procedures. Uh, they would write a report in a format that we wanted them to write it in. Um, and it also gave them probably a little bit of experience and knowledge that they never had in the first place. And, and from then, um, it kind of grew into something where um, there was obviously a, a need for that, a need for that type of training course within the security industry. So we started charging for it, and then Vanquish Training Academy just became its own thing. Um, just before I move on though, um, what I would like to point out is Vanquish Training Academy is its own entity, and it only became its own entity in its own right very recently uh, at the time of making this video. Um, I think it was May or June 2016. Before that, all of the um, trading went through the first company, the security company. Uh, 
it doesn't it does make a profit it's not it, it does make a profit but it's not there as a profit making entity the purpose of it being there and this is bank training academy I'm referring to the purpose of being there is to provide operatives to the other two companies uh, just a quick run through of our clients so these are uh, the security companies clients um, obviously the high net worth individuals we cannot mention for obvious reasons um, Crown Plaza Hotel is one of our clients and we provide uh, corporate security services for those uh, for them. Um, Seven Dials, public relations organization uh, who organize a lot of big VIP based events. Uh, Universal Music Group, we are official suppliers to, uh, to them for close protection services only. Uh, at UEFA, we're a client of ours, we're not anymore, but they were a client of ours for a period of time. Western Union, uh, they, at the point of shooting this video, they still are one of our corporate clients, which are obviously quite huge. Um, and the BBC, the BBC is one of our uh, clients, and we, again, same as Universal Records, we're official suppliers to those only for close protection services. Um, so just give you a bit of a rundown about the course. Um, we have two, two close protection courses, essentially. Um, when uh, we first wrote the course, it was the 21 day advance uh, post protection course, which is what we called it. Um, but what there was clearly a need for after speaking to quite a lot of people about it um, was just the requirement to do the 12 day post protection. Some people want to get into the security um, part of the security industry, and others do not want to have any involvement. Sorry, those people don't want to have any involvement with the investigation side of the security industry. And so for that reason, we separate the two. And what you'll see is um, on the 12 day uh, close protection course, um, they're held in both Manchester and London. Right now I'm shooting this uh, video from, from London. Um, it's 12 consecutive days. Um, obviously, you gain your level three SIA close protection qualification for that, which will enable you to uh, apply for your uh, CP license with the SIA. Um, it doesn't mention it here because we changed it very recently. Um, it says first aid at work certificate, which you do get. That's a minimum requirement for the SIA. But we also give you your pediatric first aid uh, and DFib training as well. Um, the cost of that course is 1,800 at the point of making this video. Uh, the 21 day course um, it encompasses what I've just mentioned, the 12 day close protection, but it also includes our all of our investigation based courses. So, once again, level 3 SIA close protection qualification. Uh, first aid at work, you do all, this also encompasses um, or includes uh, pediatric first aid and DFib training as well. Um, but it also includes our five day advanced surveillance course. Um, our bug sweeping course that we create ourselves, technical surveillance countermeasures, um, counter and anti surveillance as well. And you also do your topographical test, which is what you uh, will need if you decide to apply for your public carriage office license, which is essentially your chauffeur's license. Uh, there are a number of payment options, all of which will be available on the website. Um, Obviously, for all both courses, all courses we have, you're, you're, you're able to pay the amount in full should your application be successful. Um, you can pay a deposit of 200 pounds and pay the remaining amount on the day of the course. Or there are two payment plans. Uh, for the payment plans, you have to apply for them as well. Um, again, with the 21 day course, you can pay the amount in full should your application be successful. You can pay a deposit at this point in time Eight hundred and sixty-four pounds, which equates to thirty percent of the full amount. Um, and again, there are two payment uh, plan options for which you have to apply for. And when you apply, by the way, for the, for the not for the not for the training course, when you apply for a payment plan, you have to upload various documents and things like that. So uh, there's a video here that explains um, why we have an application process. Um, I won't play the video. I think it's probably better that I just explain it verbally. Um, so this video explains that we only recruit people from these training courses, and I'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Um, but the application process itself is very, very simple. It only asks you uh, four or five things. Your name, contact number, email address, where you'd like to do your training, and on what date. Um, what happens then is you receive a series of emails um, asking you um, a series of questions, uh, which will become apparent if and when you apply. Um, and 
basically follow the steps. Really, really straightforward. Yes, it's a little bit complicated because you have to apply for it in the first place, but um, if you do apply and you are successful, uh, the benefits will be greater than, uh, than expected, I believe. Uh, so just to give you um, an idea of how the course is structured, um, obviously you do your 12-day post protection as part of your post protection course, regardless of whether you're doing the 12 days or the 21 days. Um, but our courses that are included into the 21-day package are the two-day basic surveillance and the five-day advanced surveillance course, um, the two-day bug sweeping, um, three-day counter and anti, first aid, and chauffeur training. So uh, the, the, the two-day surveillance uh, is the first two days of the five-day advanced surveillance. After that, you'll move on to the 12-day close protection element. So those of you who are going to um, are hoping to attend the 21-day course, you will start off first five days will be close uh, uh, advanced surveillance. On the sixth day, you will probably see other candidates come in who are just coming to do the 12-day advance. Uh, sorry, big pardon, 12-day close protection element. After that, you do after the 12-day uh, close protection, you do two-day bug sweeping, and then you do counter and anti surveillance, chauffeur training and three day first aid. The chauffeur training is actually about half a day, it's not that long. Um, what I should mention here though, is that whilst all courses will start off with the five day advanced surveillance, the rest of it is subject to change, and that could be uh, for a number of reasons, which there's really no point in going over at the moment, but essentially what you need to know is that all of those elements of the course will be included. Um, we often get asked about people who have um, various learning difficulties, um, one of which is dyslexia. Um, we have uh, a number of things to uh, assist uh, those who suffer from dyslexia. Um, we feel that uh, someone who suffers from dyslexia shouldn't be prevented, should, shouldn't uh, be restricted as to what they do for a career, especially working in the security industry. Yes, you should. Yeah, you are going to have um, issues with uh, maybe filling out reports and things like that. But I'm going to mention a few things here that will make you well, hopefully, uh, make you realise that it's something you should part to one side. There's a lot of practical on the course. Yes, there's a lot of theory as well. But there are a number of things that we do to help you with that. Um, VARC is a process in which um, enables us to establish or determine what your learning preference is, um, and throughout the course we will refer to your learning preference. Um, and try to deliver material um, subject to your personal preference. ICT, Information Communication Technology. So if you suffer, or if you're not very good at computers, which is very, very common, um, again, it shouldn't affect you during this course. One of the reasons is because every time we do have a process that involves using a computer, um, it is step by step. Uh, and if there's problems, um, you can always rely on teamwork. So I've skipped a couple there, but I wanted to mention team work because I feel like it's quite important. Within the security industry, uh, you will work as a team at some point. I have no doubt that you'll spend most of your time working as part of the team. And as such, on the course, we encourage people to provide support, uh, emotional, physical support, uh, to their teammates as much as possible. Um, throughout the course, we conduct rig uh, rigorous and regular assessments. Those assessments aren't to uh, check you or to test you in any way. It's just to make sure that our instructors are delivering the course the right way. In another way, I can, I can word it as so, it's to ensure that learning has taken place. Again, that's not for our course attendees, it's mainly to ensure that instructors are doing their job. The application process itself, um, the application process, I can't go through step by step because it does change from time to time, and I'm sure it's gonna change from this point in time to, uh, to next year even. Um, but if we felt there were going to be any real issues with your learning, um, it would be picked up on, I think, during the application process. Um, so if you uh, are successful to come on, or, you know, if you have a successful application and you do come and work for us, um, you will be really low. So again, pause. So, um, so there are a couple of recruitment policies that we have. Um, Anchorage Investigation Services, since 2013, implemented uh, a recruitment policy whereby it doesn't take on anyone, hasn't done one of our own training courses, 
there are a number of reasons for it. Going back to the beginning of this presentation where I mentioned uh, the work quality from certain individuals who hadn't done a training course was very, very poor. So for us, it's just a way to ensure that our operatives represent us in a way that our clients expect. And um, the, the security company, oddly enough, only implemented this same policy uh, on the 6th of August 2016. So it's relatively new, but we do no, we no longer recruit anyone that hasn't done one of our own training courses. Um, there was a blog post um, that was sent out on the 21st of May 2016 um, explaining why we're doing it in a little bit more detail and there were only three interview dates taking place. Like I say, the last one was on the 6th of August 2016. So, should your application be successful, after the course is finished, you will become part of an international team that represent Vanquish while servicing our high-end corporate clients and valued private clients from all over the world. Uh, if you uh, work in the security sector, you will be uh, hopefully representing Vanquish uh, with one of the silver Vila Pelpins, that's seen there. Um, there are a few elements. We uh, mentioned the contract, and honestly, I don't think it's worth mentioning now, so skip, skip, skip. Uh, so, we have a unique task delegation system. It's something I created, so I know it's unique. Um, it's subject to copyright. We have Balls. So, so when it comes to taking on work, uh, there's a, um, a task delegation uh, system that I created myself as part of my role as the Chief Operating Officer, um, whereby all of our operatives will simultaneously receive an email when a task comes in. So uh, this email will contain the following information. It will tell you the type of task that it is, so that could be close protection, it could be a surveillance task. Um, it will tell you the date and, uh, date and time of the task, the location geographically, the pay rate, and the estimated duration. So the pay rate could be by hour or by or per day, and, and the estimated duration would be the amount of hours or the amount of days. Um, with that information, um, we will uh, expect you to only respond if you're available. And it's really up to our operatives um, to decide whether it's economically viable for you to take on that task. Um, we can't decide that. It, it, it's your choice. If, for example, you're going to be doing, uh, if you live in, if you live in Manchester and a task comes up in Birmingham for only four hours, it's probably not worth you travelling. But if it's in London for twelve days and it's two hundred pounds a day, then it probably is worth you travelling down to London to take that task on. Um, typically speaking, not always, but most of the time, the first opportunity to respond to these emails will be delegated that task, who will then be uh, given a, a full operational briefing by email. Uh, as a vanquish operative, you'll receive most uh, payments for tasks in advance. So um, it doesn't say this in your contract, it's not set in stone, but at this point in time, we endeavor to pay operatives who do tasks that are five days or less in advance. There's a number of reasons for that, uh, but it's just one of our ways to show appreciation to our operatives. Regardless of whether you're paid in advance or not, you are required to complete an online invoice. Again, it's another thing I created, but it's, um, it's a system that is very, very easy to do. It doesn't require you to fill in your own invoice and send it to us, which is a little bit laborious. You fill it in, step by step, it asks you the date, start time, so on and so forth, all of your details, um, the amount of hours you worked or the amount of days you worked, and then submit. Really straightforward process. It even sends you an email to confirm what you've sent. But just to give you an idea of what type of tasks that you might be delegated, um, Vanquish Investigation Services, um, you would only be eligible to work for if you've done the 21-day course. Um, you may be deployed on COVID surveillance operations, uh, vehicle tracker deployments, uh, debtor tracing, uh, assistance with fraud investigations. We do a lot of fraud investigations for both corporate and private clients. Uh, bug sweeping, which is quite interesting, and it's actually quite a high rate of pay as well. Um, and count surveillance operations, along with potentially protective surveillance operations, which is essentially where you provide covert protection to either a property or individual. Um, the security company, obviously, uh, corporate event security is one of the things we do, we do a lot of it. Uh, corporate events could be for AGMs, um, it could be for um, uh, uh, could be for Christmas parties and things like that. Um, they're always high end. Uh, there's never any trouble at different type of events that we do. Uh, we work for a lot of art galleries, state homes, and things like that. 
Um, residential security, uh, security driving, which is why in our course we encompass the chauffeur element as well as the security element. Uh, obviously, close protection operations occur, so you may be delegated tasks for close protection either short term or long term. And again, protective surveillance, which is what I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, one of the common questions that we get is what's the rate of pain? In all honesty, um, this is a video, so it's probably going to be subject to change over the years. Um, typically speaking, though, um, so for close protection services, um, you paid a minimum of £150 per day, and that can go up almost without a limit because it will vary subject to the threat level and things like that. Um, other services, we don't really want to disclose too much about what we pay, but for bug sweeps and things like that, again, same CP, minimum £150 a day. Um, surveillance operations vary. Again, it's not something we really want to disclose um, to our competitors and things like that for obvious reasons. Um, what I would encourage you to do, if it's something you really want to know, um, you can always give us a call. Again, at the point of making this video, that, those uh, rates of pay are what they are now but they are obviously subject to change as time goes on. So what I'd encourage you to do is give us a call to get an update on that, if that's information you require. Um, but in all honesty, we pay what we pay the typical pay rates within the industry anyway. Um, if you have any questions, please give us a call. If you've not done so already, please download the brochure. Um, if you want to apply for the course, www.vanquishacademy.com forward slash apply. Have any questions once again? Please feel free to give us a call or send us an email.